Good morning to you all. Welcome at this uh, webinar for commercial audio and uh, system design. I'll be your host for today for this webinar. My name is Martijn van Overveld. I'm a marketing manager for EMEA, amongst others, responsible for commercial audio. So the presenter said Jan Peter Smolders, uh, application engineer um, for uh, public address, uh, commercial audio, for public address, voice alarm. Uh, with a wide knowledge of our systems and applications and as such also the right person to uh, to do this presentation today um let me give you a couple before i give the the floor to jan peter let me give you a couple of uh, um, um, annotations for what the presentation is about can you move to the next slide jan peter yeah okay yeah, just a couple of things on the on the objectives and the and the topics of uh, of this uh, presentation I'll, um, so basically it is all about uh, system design of commercial commercial audio systems so what we will do today is give you uh, an overview of uh, of the systems that we have ready for you for uh, applications in commercial audio so young people will go through some examples then and how to design and um, last but not least also um will give you more insights on uh, 100 volt systems and the, and the basics in that um so i don't want to uh, steal more of your uh, of your presentation time here uh, jan peters i'll give the floor to you so um there you go okay thanks uh, martijn welcome everybody um yeah we'll start directly with the commercial audio applications so first topic what is commercial audio um well, Bosch has a lot of uh, different um, uh, devices uh, which can provide different control methods and speaker types to create a, a nice atmosphere. Basically, um, yeah, you you will enhance the customer's experience uh, by creating this this atmosphere. And how do we do that? We do that with a nice foreground to back background uh, business supporting music and the possibility to broadcast advertisements, voice announcements, and speech. So that is what we mean with um, commercial audio. A commercial audio system, it, it can be a standalone system. So for, for instance, uh, in, uh, one system in a shop, but it can also be extended uh, and connected to a public address voice alarm uh, system, which is present maybe in a mall or in, in, a, big, uh, in a bigger environment. So it will all also uh, next to the, the, the nice environment. Also, it will add uh, some safety to your uh, to your uh, environment where you are. If you look at the uh, different uh, solutions that we have, we have here from the left to the right, uh, an entry level, extended level, and professional level. Now the entry level that is for uh, a smaller businesses like an office, small office, a restaurant, a bar, a retail shop. Then we're talking about a system that can address one to two zones. Uh, easy to install, easy to uh, easy to use. Then the extended systems. It's a bigger, a bigger supermarket, maybe a big store or a mall. Then we're talking about systems that can address two to six zones but also have two or more channels, two or more amplifier channels. That means that, for instance, if you have a system with two zones, then in one zone you can have, for instance, music, and in the other zone you can make an announcement or whatever you like. Then the uh, the last one, the professional uh, system, uh, we're talking about uh, planar matrix here, is for bigger um, uh, environments, clothing store, conference, uh, hotel, boardrooms, fitness center, so it's a multi-purpose system. We're talking about uh, eight zones here, up to eight zones. Um, and well, it will be important to have a good quality of, of uh, music, a good audio quality. Now this part, the professional part, we will do in part one, next, oh, yeah, part two next week. Okay, commercial audio systems. If we look at the uh, Bosch solutions, the entry level application, um, we are looking at Plana Easy Line. This is a small system which can address one to two zones, a, sim a single uh, amplifier, so a single, single channel. Um, if you look on the picture here on the left, we see two mixer amplifiers. The top one, 
the one me it has four microphone line inputs one background music input it's one channel one amplifier you can address one zone with a built-in amplifier of 60 watt 120 or 240 watts and below that the uh, ple one ma uh, one one channel mixer amplifier uh, can address also one zone, but it has three BGM inputs uh, plus a priority input. So this uh, mixer amplifier you can connect also to a voice alarm system uh, with a priority input 400 volts. So you can connect to a simple loudspeaker line that is already in your in your venue. It has also three different versions: um, an amplifier of 30, 60, or 120 watts. Uh, next to that. We will see the uh, PLE 2M8, so it's a two zone mixer amplifier. Um, on top of it, you will see two call stations. The, the, the left one is a one zone call station or an all call. Uh, you, you can address one zone. And uh, next, next to that, we have a two zone call station, the uh, 2CS which can be used in combination with the 2MA. The 2MA has uh, six microphone line inputs, three uh, background music inputs, also a priority input. It's a one channel uh, system, one amplifier, and it can address two zones with a built-in amplifier power of 120 or 240 watts. The next in line is um, the uh, planar in planar easy line is the uh, 10 uh, M2. This is a, a mixer where you can connect two external amplifiers to. So this is a two zone system, but with two the possibility of two amplifier channels. So that means if you uh, have uh, music in one zone, for instance, you can make an announcement in the in the other one, like I, I just already said. If you look at the picture here on top of this system, we see a wall panel. This is a nice feature. You can uh, mount it uh, into the wall and you can make a selection of your uh, BGM channels. This system has also three BGM inputs and you can also make a selection of the zone where the, this music should be uh, audible in yeah? zone one or zone two or both. Now next to it, we have the two zone call station you can also use a one zone call station uh, if you don't need to um, address the individual zones you can add two or you can connect two um, external amplifiers to this you see here the um, the planar power amplifiers 120 watt or 240 watts but you can of course connect any amplifier uh, that you would like to use so for instance if you have already an installation where you have already in uh, amplifiers installed you can just easily use this mixer and connect it to those amplifiers as well now if you go to the extended applications um we have the um uh, plana uh, all-in-one solution actually this is a six, six zone uh, device, so you can address six zones. And you can also use an external amplifier to the system. So you can also use this in a two, two channel mode. If you look at the picture, you will see the call stations with the possibility to address six zones individually. A remote control unit on top of it where you can make a selection of the zones. It also has an external input, as you can see, an XLR and a mini jack. So you can control these, uh, this unit also, uh, the device also remotely. It has a built-in amplifier, 240 watt, and it has an integrated music unit. So there's a USB and an SD input that you can use here as well. Our final application, the professional application, um, you see here this system is called Planar Matrix. It has an eight in, eight out a mixer, uh, the small unit you see on top. And it has two uh, versions of amplifiers, uh, 100, 125 watt or a 220 watt amplifier. Now these amplifiers have four uh, amplifier channel uh, channels inside. So each channel 
can handle this power. So uh, if you would buy a four by 125 watt amplifier, you have four amplified channels of 125 watt. That means 500 watt in total. Now, if you want to use this system in all zones, uh, with all zones connected, you, you need eight amplifier channels. You need two of those amplifiers, as you see here in this picture. On top of this uh, system, you see the call station. Uh, you can select uh, zones with it. You can also program it uh, to make an all, all zone uh, uh, button to select. And next to it, you see the uh, wire panel, uh, it's, uh, the wall panel, sorry. This panel you can use to select uh, music sources uh, and the volume, or you can use it to select one of the four uh, inputs that are available uh, on the uh, mixer. Now, a nice thing about this system is also that it has a DSP, digital signal processing inside, so you have a lot of possibilities to, uh, well, enhance the sound, actually. Now, the design. If we look at the design of a commercial audio system, what uh, do we need? First of all, we need to know what the requirements are and for which type of application it's going to be used. So, start with the first question, how many zones are required? If we have an application with one to two zones, then we can use a planar easy line mixer amplifier, we've seen. Or if you need two to six zones, yeah, we at least uh, need uh, a two-channel mixer for planar easy and some pam uh, power amplifiers, or we can use the planar all-in-one, which has six zones. And then if we need more zones, yeah, four to eight, um, then we need planar matrix. Then another important choice you have to make is the amplifier power. How much amplifier do you need? This is depending on the uh, loudspeaker load. So the amount of loudspeakers, if you have a large room, you need more loudspeakers. It could also be that you need uh, loudspeakers with uh, which will use or re which will require more power. So depending on your loudspeaker choice, you have to decide on how much amplifier power you need. Some additional requirements uh, could be the amount of music sources you uh, you can connect to to the device. Uh, you can have one or three, or maybe it has to be built in, like we see in the all-in-one. Um, does it have to be un uninterrupted? So if music is playing, it should not be interrupted when you're making, for instance, an announcement, then you need at least a two-channel system. So a system with uh, at least two amplifier channels. Control, if you need uh, remote control via wall panel or wireless maybe, Maybe you need to enhance the sound, you need the DSP. Um, also, it could be that you have uh, maybe a conference in, in a hotel, so you have some conference rooms that you would like to uh, combine. Eh? If you have a bigger conference that you can combine two conference rooms to one, so you would like to use presets maybe. Or you might want to integrate it with a third party application like AMX or Crest on maybe. And then we're talking about uh, from the wireless part on, we are talking about the planar matrix system, which we will be talking about in our second part uh, of this webinar next week. Now, if you're looking at loudspeakers, um, there are different types of loudspeakers. Uh, we, we took some of them. You see here, ceiling, surface, or pendant loudspeakers. If we look at the left column, ceiling loudspeakers commonly used in, in offices, restaurants, or supermarkets. And if you look from the bottom to the top, you can see they go up in performance. You can have um, a simple ceiling loudspeaker like the LHM or the LBC 3090. And then you go up, you see the LC6. Now, this is a special one. You can see there's a big uh, ceiling loudspeaker in the middle that's a subwoofer. So very good for the for the low frequencies and for satellite speakers. 
And then if you go up again, we have the LC2 and the LC20. These are premium lungs because of a very good frequency response, very nice for a uh, good uh, audio reproduction. Then if you look in the middle column, um, surface mount loudspeakers, uh, which we'll see in, for instance, bars or retail stores, uh, they have brackets or a way to, to mount them to a wall. Uh, entry level here, uh, the LB10 or the LB2, which is already a very nice uh, loudspeaker. Um, and if we go up, we see the LB, the LB6, uh, this one over here. The LB6 has also a subwoofer, the subwoofer uh, in, the, in the middle and for satellites. And left on top, the LB20, very, very nice cabinet loudspeakers, uh, full range loudspeakers in different sizes. And then in the column on the right, um, pendant loudspeakers. Um, if you have, for instance, very high ceilings and uh, you uh, you you don't want to use that many high, high power uh, uh, loudspeakers uh, in order to be able to have enough uh, sound pressure level, you can also use pendant loudspeakers, uh, so they're a little bit closer to uh, to to your ears. Um, the LP6, uh, for instance, you can you can use for that purpose. Then on the right side, you will see also uh, some solution with subwoofers. If you need a lot of bass, you know, if you have, if, if music in the, in the, for instance, in a retail store or, or whatever, a uh, uh, clothing store, um, and you need a lot of uh, bass, then you could add to your system maybe an LB20 subwoofer uh, as a big, a big loudspeaker, or you can use the LC6 or LB6 uh, systems, subwoofers with uh, with the satellites we also have for those uh, systems, uh, or the LC2 uh, subwoofer, that's a big subwoofer, which you can use also for this purpose. Now, if you look at an example, how to design um, a system, uh, we're going to look at a fast food uh, restaurant. Uh, it's a one zone system. Now, what are the requirements? We have a um, a restaurant with an area of approximately 150 to 250 square meters. We need to make uh, voice announcements. Uh, we also need separate tone control via voice and music for voice and music. And we need a priority input so it can be connected to a voice alarm system as well. And three music sources. Now for this application, we are going to use premium ceiling loudspeakers. So how does that look, this solution? The premium ceiling loudspeakers, we, we will use six of them. And we have chosen the LC2 PC30 G64 for this, for this application. And we are going to use the uh, PLN2MA, so a two-zone mixer amplifier, which has three BGM inputs. Now, the required power, we are using six um, LC2 PC30 loudspeakers, they're 30 watts. So, in total, we need at least 180 watts of amplifier power. So, this PLN2MA 240, which is a 240 watt uh, amplifier, will be sufficient. Then, in order to make announcements, we will use the uh, all call call station you'll see here on this picture. If you look at the installation, it's very straightforward. We have the device uh, on the top, on the top right, uh, with the call station connected. Two zones, two outputs. Um, on each zone, we have uh, three of those loudspeakers uh, connected. And there's also an option, for instance, to add an additional loudspeaker, for instance, in the restroom. Uh, that's easily done. We are using 100 volt line, so you can just tap it off somewhere from that uh, line and connect it directly to where you need it. Now, a second example, we have a supermarket and we need up to six zones for this application. So it's a big uh, supermarket, 500 to 800 square meters. We need voice announcements, um, messaging alerts and special offers. Uh, background music, uh, maybe tuner, MP3 player, control via the wall panel, and six independent zones. Now, 
the product we select for this is the LC6 compact sound system. So we are going to use the um, subwoofer with four satellites and we use two of them. And there's also um, a possibility to use this uh, satellite speakers independent version, but we have chosen the, uh, the ceiling version. Then we connect that to the uh, all-in-one amplifier. So we have six zones, 240 watts. Uh, it has an, a tuner and a USB SD player. Um, you have three additional music inputs, docking functionality on this uh, on this device, and six microphone inputs, uh, of which two have a line option. Now, docking. If you don't know what docking is, it's like when you have music playing in a zone. And you want to make an announcement there is that your announcement when your announcement is live the music will uh, lower its volume so the music is still be, is still there but at the lower volume and then when your announcement is over the vo the volume of the uh, music will return to its initial value so it's, it, it becomes louder again Now the option of this uh, of this device of the all-in-one is to add an external amplifier. For instance, um, uh, a plain easy line power amplifier of 240 watts. Eh? It will match the internal amplifier of this uh, of this unit. So in that uh, case, when you connect an additional amplifier, you will have two amplifier channels. So you will not interrupt music when you're making, for instance, an announcement to zone one then the music in, in the other zones will still continue. So be aware of that. If you need uh, this, this, this type of application, you need music at all times, not interrupted, make sure that you have a second amplifier channel available. So add uh, an additional amplifier to it. Now for the announcements, we need a call station. We have a dedicated call station for this system, six zones as you see here on this picture, and a uh, remote control panel. This is a wired panel to take over the uh, control of the uh, of the device itself. Um, as you can see already here on this picture, you can make a zone selection. You can uh, select your uh, music source. You have a master volume, um, and you can uh, also connect here um, an additional microphone. You also have a, a line input you see here, this uh, mini jack a microphone to the XLR input. So that's also a possibility here. If we look at the uh, at the picture, at the how it's connected, we have uh, the two subwoofers in the middle, in the middle of the um, of the room here, and the four satellite speakers around it. Um, here is the uh, the other one a wall panel, which you can also use at another location. Uh, if you're if you have this in uh, in a separate room, maybe you can use a wall panel, maybe close to uh, the bar or uh, sorry sorry to the <laughs> close to uh, to an office uh, in your supermarket or wherever you want to use this. In addition, you could um, you could add uh, more zones. Yeah, we have now two zones in use, but you can also add zones, for instance, uh, for the restrooms, for the office, for the, the storage or the outside entrance, maybe. And then you have a full uh, six zones used of this of this system. OK, now in order to clarify how we are connecting these uh, loudspeakers. Uh, we have to know a little bit how a 100 volt system works. Um, it's important to know um, what what impedance is. What is uh, what is the impedance of a, of a system, a loudspeaker or an amplifier? Now, the uh, loudspeaker impedance refers to the load a loudspeaker puts on an amplifier. Um, this is actually the resistance it will it, it the, the speaker offers to the to the current that this amplifier can supply. Now, in um, in an audio system, the the output current is is uh, alternating. It's AC. It's not direct. It's not DC like from a, from a battery. 
and therefore they call the uh, resistance uh, not resistance but they call it impedance but it's also measured in ohms so that is the same only because, because of the fact that it's at different frequencies the uh, resistance is called impedance now the impedance is not the same for every frequency if you look at the picture on the right you can see in this graph it goes up a bit then it goes down up again here and then it goes down slightly up and so it it varies with the uh, frequency um, in general the uh, manuf manufacturer state the nominal impedance uh, like you see in the picture here on the right 8 ohm which is the average of the lowest value of the speaker impedance you can see all that also in the graph now, Common impedances uh, are 4, 6, 8, or 16 ohm, and they are referred to as low impedance or low Z. So that's also commonly used for these uh, kind of impedances. Oh, sorry. Did I go too fast here? Yeah. Um, we know low, low impedance loudspeakers are quite often used in, in home audio systems, uh, what you have at home. In pro sound, if you have a big concert hall or theater, so those speakers are also directly connected at low impedance to an amplifier. Like you see here on this um, on this picture, we have two loudspeakers, two low impedance loudspeakers connected to the 8 ohm input of this uh, mixer amplifier. Now each uh, loudspeaker load is 8 ohm. Now, how can you calculate the power then for these uh, loudspeakers? This is based on Ohm's, uh, Ohm's law. The power is uh, calculated by the uh, voltage squared divided by the impedance. And so if you look at this 120 watt uh, amplifier, uh, the, so, the, so the power is 120 watt. In, on the output, you end it's connected to an 8 ohm um, loudspeaker, uh, so that it's it's made for an 8 ohm output. Uh, the voltage on the output will be then 31 volt, as you can see in this equation over here. Now, what happens if you connect multiple loudspeakers to a single low impedance um, output of the amplifier? Now the total impedance, if, you, if, if all these loudspeakers have the same impedance, uh, let's say they're all 8 ohm or something like that, you have to calculate the, um, the, the total connected uh, load of this, uh, on this amplifier channel. You can do that by this, uh, this uh, equation. It's the loud, loudspeaker impedance of the individual loudspeaker divided by the number of loudspeakers. So for instance, we have here, 8 ohm loudspeakers we have connected to, then the total load will become not 8 ohm, but it will become 4 ohm for each of these outputs. So the load connected to this amplifier now will get higher. So the lower the, uh, the impedance gets, the higher the load of this uh, on this amplifier will become. You can see that in this application or in this equation here. The power is uh, well 30, 31 volt squared divided by four now the total connected power to this amplifier is 240 watt uh, now be aware this amplifier is uh, designed to handle 120 watts so you will be overloading this uh, this amplifier now at this stage now what happens if you have different impedances so you have different types of loudspeakers with different impedances then the uh, equation looks a little bit different, as you see uh, over here in this uh, in this example. Oh. So let's see if um, what what the total impedance will be if we have a four ohm, six ohm, and eight ohm loudspeaker. Then the result of the uh, impedance connected to this amplifier channel will be 1.85 ohm. Now you can imagine the power that you connect now is way higher it is 520 watts so be very careful if you are using uh, a low impedance amplifier and you're using 
low impedance loudspeakers. You want to connect them like this, yeah? all, all to this to the single output. Uh, you might overload the amplifier if it's not matching. If those um, impedances do not match. Yeah? Um, what I mean with that is this this amplifier is uh, designed for uh, 8 ohm, so it has an 8 ohm output. If you then connect all these loudspeakers with different impedances, you uh, will start to overload the amplifier. Now, what happens if you put them then in series, eh, not in parallel, but you wire them in series? Then it's uh, pretty easy. You, you can just add all the impedances to, together. So you will add, eh, if this is an 8 ohm, um, speaker, then you will add the impedance uh, for each uh, amplifier output. We have connected two of these loudspeakers, so that means in total 16 ohm. Now the impedance goes up. That means the total power that you will get out of this amplifier now will be less. And in this case, it will be 60 watts, so half of the power you will get out of it. So be aware of that as well. Um, if you're having loudspeakers, uh, low impedance loudspeakers, and you connect them in series, you will lose the power that your amplifier is uh, designed for. So the disadvantages of low impedance loudspeakers. Um, yeah, you, you need thick loudspeaker cables because the currents can become quite high uh, because of the low, low impedance of the loudspeakers. So the lower the impedance, you have the higher the current. So you have also taken into account that you will have cable losses, long cables, you will have a lot of uh, loss and your, your cable losses will, will increase. Um, you must make sure, uh, like I already explained, you must make sure that your uh, impedance of your amplifier imp uh, matches the impedance of your, of your, uh, of your loudspeakers. So what does that mean? If you have uh, several loudspeakers that you have to connect, in series or in parallel, you have to make calculations for each connection of each amplifier channel. And it's also difficult to um, to install because you cannot, let's say, um, connect that many loudspeakers to a single line, to a single amplifier output, eh, like I just explained. So you need to install a lot of loudspeaker lines, so a lot of loudspeaker cables, like you see in the picture here on the right, or the ins installation costs will also be higher. Now, if you look at the 100 volt loudspeaker system, um, uh, a 100 volt system amplifier has a constant output voltage of 100 volt. So that's uh, that's easy to remember. Um, what happens in the amplifier? Um, in the amplifier, uh, we will add a step up transformer. So we have the same amplifier as we used in the example before. Uh, 120, volt, uh, 120 watt amplifier, uh, 31 volts at the output, and there we connect this uh, this step up transformer, which will transform the voltage up to 100 volt, so to a higher voltage. And what does does that mean for the amplifier for the for the loudspeakers? Um, in order to be able to use the same loudspeakers, eh, so the same low impedance loudspeakers, we also need a step down transformer in that loudspeaker. And like you see on the picture here, uh, depending on the uh, on the power, this uh, this loudspeaker can handle, uh, the individual loudspeaker can handle, there's a certain step down ratio. Like for instance, for the six watt loudspeaker, you want to transform the 100 volt down to seven volt. And so it has a ratio of one to uh, 0 0.07. And for the 10 watt loudspeaker, you want to transfer, uh, transform it down to 9 volt. So you have a, trans, a step down ratio uh, of 1 to uh, 0 0.09. So it, the, the transformer, the size of the transformer, depends on the power that the loudspeaker can handle, right? Now, the uh, impedance of the loudspeaker at the 100 volt side in increases. So uh, here we're talking about high Z, so high high impedance. Um, yeah, we also know this as um, 70 volt, 100 volt, constant voltage, voltage or distributed system. So that's also uh, for a 100 volt system, you also 
see these, these names are also commonly used. Now, 70 volt, 70 volt is uh, used mainly in the US because um, 100 volt exceeds the safety standard. So they think it's not safe. Um, yeah, I have to admit 100 volt is it's quite high voltage. So if you if you have an amplifier uh, with, for instance, um, an emergency single uh, on the output, yeah, so at full power, then 100 volts can be really harmful. So be careful uh, working on 100 volt systems is, uh, is, is not without danger. One thing to remember also, if you use a 70 volt output, uh, some of these uh, systems also have a 70 volt output, uh, it is half the power uh, compared to a 100 volt output. So that also means that the sound pressure level that you will have in the end on your loudspeakers also will be reduced with 3 dB. So you have 3 dB less on the output of your of your um, loudspeaker. Now some calculations on a 100 volt system. That's easy. Um, it's the same same rules uh, apply. Of course, you have a 6 watt loudspeaker. So the impedance, uh, let us see, impedance means uh, that you have to use 100 volts squared divided by six and then the impedance of this loudspeaker is 1667 ohm for a 10 watt loudspeaker uh, same equation but then divided by 10 the impedance of that loudspeaker on the 100 volt side will be 1000 ohm so this is a nice way to calculate all these impedances now what is the total Loudspeaker impedance in this case, you can use this equation, for instance, and the total will then be 625 ohm of those two speakers connected here in parallel. Now, the loud impedance on the 100 volt side of a 120 watt amplifier will be um, 83 ohm. So you have uh, the 100 volt squared divided by 120 watt. Uh, that will give you a total loud uh, impedance of 83 ohms. So in this case, we have 625 ohm connected. That is safe. So we have um, uh, enough power on the amplifier side to, to drive these, these two loudspeakers. Now, when you design a 100 volt system, um, there is actually no need to use these uh, complicated calculations because you can easily um, calculate the total power of the connected loudspeakers by adding it all up. If you have, for instance, a 6 watt and a 10 watt loudspeaker, like you see here, uh, you know that the total load on the system uh, on the amplifier will be 16 watt. So that's easily done. You can just add it all up. Now this must match, of course, the uh, the power of the uh, amplifier. Um, so in this case, if you have a 120 watt uh, amplifier, you could connect maybe 12 10 watt loudspeakers. Uh, so that's just as an example. You can just add the uh, the power of this um, of these of these loudspeakers all together. Um, also, what you can do. Uh, if you have an impedance measurement device, you see here, you can also measure it uh, with a handheld device, just connect it to the, uh, to the loudspeaker line, and you will see the uh, total, uh, the total uh, power connected to, to the line, or the impedance connected to the line. And if you know that, if you know the impedance, of course, you can calculate the, the power, eh? like you see over here. We have measured uh, 1670 ohm, then the total power connected on that line will be uh, 100 volt squared divided by this. This impedance means that you have approximately 6 watt connected to this loudspeaker line. So very easy to calculate or measure and you know instantly what the, the power is that is connected to these loudspeaker lines. Now, um, 100 loudspeaker, um, 100 volt loudspeakers will have a transformer, like I said, and most of these loud, uh, loudspeaker transformers will have taps on it, so you can reduce the power of that loudspeaker, the power consumption of the loudspeaker. Um, when you reduce 
uh, we you reduce want to reduce the the power you just go to the next uh, tab on that on that transformer like you see here on the right we have um uh, four tabs 6 watt 3 watt 1.5 watt and 0.75 watt um so each step down you will reduce it by 50 percent of the, the power um what it eventually does on the on the secondary side of the of the transformer the step down voltage will just decrease right that's what happens on the on the secondary side on the loudspeaker so it will reduce uh, the power with 50 percent again if you reduce power with 50 uh, percent it will also reduce the sound pressure level that this loudspeaker then can produce with 3 dB, so it will become 3 dB less. If you look at the advantages of 100 volt systems, um, yeah, there are lower currents. The higher, the higher the voltage, the lower the, the, the current through these uh, through these cables. So you can use thin cables. You have less cable losses. You can run longer cable uh, uh, runs. You can connect multiple loudspeaker to a single line it doesn't matter if you can just add uh, as many loudspeakers you like to one single line up to the moment it reaches the maximum power that the amplifier can deliver you can also combine different power levels uh, different impedances it doesn't matter you can easily calculate it it's easily added up all these powers or measured uh, if you if you like Easy to install, one single line to cover this whole uh, area. Um, and also easy to expand. You can just tap off at any position on the 100 volt loudspeaker line and you can add an, uh, an, ex an extra loudspeaker if you like. So installation costs are uh, lower compared to a low impedance system. Okay, Martijn, this is... Uh, what I want to tell you today about commercial audio and 100 volt basics. Are there any questions? Yeah, let's see what questions we have here. Have any yet? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, here is uh, one. So, how many of these uh, PLN? six z4s can be connected to one panel all in one how many uh -huh. panels can be connected uh, maybe uh you can answer the next question. The the difference between and that's on um, on a call station. Uh, uh, besides then the different connect connectors, what is the difference between call stations LBB nineteen fifty and the PLE one CS? Another question, maybe that's on the ones here. Yes. Um, does the uh, does a multiple zone setup not compli complicate things in the supermarket? Um, can you transmit to all zones at once? Yeah, you can. You can make all calls. Uh, so you can make uh, a call to. It's also depending on the on your system your, and the call station you have. Um, um, but yeah, okay, if you have a call station with uh, different zones, you can connect, you can uh, push all buttons or all call button, and then you make a call mm -hmm. to all zones at the same time. Um, yeah, it depends a little bit. This next question is, I don't know for which uh, system this question is meant, but can the amps handle a mix of low impedance on one channel and 100 volt on another? So uh, yeah, yeah. That's I can get the planar matrix then that we, we that we talk about. Um, also, yeah, but uh, the amplifiers also, like I showed in the picture, have an eight ohm and a hundred volt uh, output. Um, 
be aware that uh, that you that you have to make a, a calculation on the power huh? you you're using then at, the, at yeah. that time basically so what you say is when you have a two zone system you could also use one output in low z and the other one in 100 volt yeah for instance you could do that yeah they're all active so you could do that Good. um ah, does the planner matrix uh, amps support emergency voice alarm connection um so the planar matrix is is not a certified uh, voice alarm system. So yeah, you can put put on any system, uh, any 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 audio you like, but it's it's not certified. Yeah, so it has an override, eh? 100 volt override input. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so you can use it, but yeah, yeah, but it's a non-certified part of your voice alarm system then. So if you have a exactly. yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. I think I think what you what you in when you connect it to a normal announcement system not in a voice alarm status then you can use it when the central system would go in an emergency alarm then you have to provide uh, things like uh, for example an, uh, a really an, an, uh, a power cutoff of the planner matrix because you are not allowed to use planner matrix anymore so you could use it for central announcement but not as a part of a voice alarm system wow. maybe that uh, helps Will Ethernet solutions, HP over IP, replace or not 100 volt solutions in the future? Okay, so if IP audio solutions uh, will replace 100 volt solutions. <coughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, for for IP audio, it, it might sound easy, but with um, with voice alarm systems, you you need to supervise everything. Yeah? So then it maybe gets more complicated. Um, yeah, we're just at the beginning of uh, developing these kind of uh, loudspeakers, uh, IP loudspeakers. Uh, and so with, yeah. IP, yeah, with IP uh, loudspeakers, especially in these commercial audio solutions, I think yes, in the future we, you will see more of that. Uh, at this point, especially when you are going to a little bit. Um, uh, more sized commercial audio solutions with let's say uh, six or eight or ten speakers, then 100 volt system is is still uh, a more cost efficient solution if, if I may say so. Because don't forget with an IP audio speaker you also need to power it. Eh? You need power over Ethernet uh, uh, routers, uh, and also that costs still. And the, also the speaker itself is not. Um, yeah, it's, it's also a little bit higher priced than a normal speaker, of course. I think that's that's something you have to take into account there. Uh, will Ethernet solutions replace? Okay, that was the same question. Somehow it came up twice. Can the amps handle a mix? Uh, I think that one also had already. Okay, okay. Ah, so accidentally it came in twice. Um, What if I add a 480 watt amplifier to a, a planner all in one? And the total loudspeaker load is 480 watt. How does 480 watt for program, 240 watt for BGM sound like? Uh, well, you, you will overload the system because the all in one has a 240 watt internal amplifier. So mm -hmm. I suggest not to do that. Yeah, if you uh, if you so if you would use a max of 240 watt, then it would work, right? Then you make it a two-channel system, basically. Um, if yeah, you if you add, yeah, if but, but the the total power you have two channels, but two channels yeah. are have to be used uh, at uh, at at the full load, right? So if you are playing music in all zones, uh, you use one channel to 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 put the music on the loudspeaker, so it cannot be more than 240 watts. So, so, the, so the, you can use a 480 watt amplifier, but you can still use all that 480 watt, 240 watt, because that's the max, the internal amplifier. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't make sense to yeah. use uh, such a high power. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Well, nowadays with availability in the market of, of amplifiers, it could be a, a, an, a, an alternative, right? No, no yeah. questions from my side. Can we stream? Can we stream music from an iPad to Planner Matrix using third-party products? 
Uh, yeah, you can do that. Um, but we're going to talk about that in, the, in next week in the next session. Okay. With that, I think we are at. Uh, let's see, is this? Um, can we? Uh, one more question. Can we configure two um, PLM wall panels with the same address to use in a big hall? So you, you would imagine then one at one side of the hall, one at the other side of the hall, and doing exactly the same. Uh, planar matrix you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's possible. You can uh, you can do that. Yeah, so basically, the, the the dip switches of the uh, of the wall panel would be then exactly the same. Yeah, you will have um, two wall panels controlling the same thing. Yeah, actually. you can also do uh, two wall panels with each their own address, which I think is the the setup how a system should be set up. And then that is how it's designed, way, yeah. right? So that's yeah, uh, yeah. that's a little bit safer then. To yeah, yeah. The... Use it as it is uh, as it is designed. So uh, use for each um, for each uh, wall panel its uh, I, uh, unique ID. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But all... okay, that's planar matrix. We'll talk about planar matrix next week. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. There are more <clears throat> in that session, right? <clears throat> I think we had, did we have one more slide on what's coming up next? Yes, we have next week the uh, part two. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I already said a couple yeah. of times, plane matrix. So <laughs> I'm going to talk about that one. Okay, now it's official. Huh? So at uh, yeah. Tuesday, 22nd of Feb, 11 to, uh, to 12 uh, Central European time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, hope to see you there again. And uh, thank you guys and uh, stay safe.